during the course of my years, I've done about six clinical pastoral units in the hospital. And I remember one in which the supervisor I might have been two or three weeks in and she called me in and and she really just blew a force of wind in my face telling me she didn't think I was going to she wasn't going to pass me in this unit if I didn't pick up my socks or whatever and I don't remember what came of it I eventually did pass but I remember that feeling her chat with me that day was kind of like someone had blown wind directly into my face and wind can be challenging as you've all told us i was thinking of sandra being from winnipeg knows uh you know has experience with strong wind and you get that kind of hunch over and you put your arms out to stabilize yourself and you can walk directly into a very strong wind but it's it's a tough piece of work there's absolutely no doubt about it but what struck me with the wind in my face was that um was that there are times when we need that there are times when we don't see what's going on around us when we're in denial about the reality of maybe our life our situation a relationship whatever it is there's that tv show intervention sometimes we need that strong wind coming at us uh, to speak a word of truth i was thinking of a young man i knew in the north who uh was very involved in aa and he said he got in you know he knew that he drank a lot but it was one one night when he was on the street in prince albert and the police had to pick him up again and he said that a prince albert officer in a very gentle voice but firm said to him son you're an alcoholic and for some reason that was the wind in his face and it just the next day he went to AA, he started working the program and had been sober ever since. But it took that wind blowing in his face, that kind of bluntness, that truthfulness, if you like, that finally transformed his life forever. But obviously we don't need that all the time, but hopefully, but there are moments, there are situations and, and points where we do need that. A few years ago, I think it was about seven years ago, after Easter one year, that year, uh, I drove down to Niagara to see my mother. And you may remember the day uh, the entire province of Ontario had 90 kilometer an hour winds. And I took old Highway 7, and I didn't even notice because, you know, 7's pretty much got uh, trees and bush on both sides. but. I will never forget getting on the 401 at Belleville. And there was one of those two story mega buses with its four way flashers on. And he literally was only going 30 kilometers an hour because he was afraid. I'm pretty sure the driver was afraid the wind was going to push this um, bus over. And it was like that all the way to Toronto. We got to the Burlington Skyway, it was closed. We got to the road that leads up off the Queen Elizabeth way to my mother's and in many places the police had it closed because those big old trees have been blown over. Um, the wind in your face creates a crisis and in the last 18 months we've really had the wind in our face over and over and talking to other clergy, other sitting on other congregational meetings. It's, it is a real crisis. The wind has made um, it questionable. The Anglican priest I was talking to last week at a meeting at the Ottawa hospital was saying, most of their parishes in Ottawa are struggling and they're not sure which ones are going to survive. It's become that kind of situation. The mission and service fund of the church uh, was down 25% last year. It had, I mean, there is so much wind coming into our face right now. It's creating a crisis of which we, I mean, I don't think we're actually as certain of the dimensions of the crisis at this moment. And that's probably true for, for others. You notice in the business community, restaurants, for example, have had a lot of press about their survivability after the crisis. And I think the wind in your face, rather than at your back, the wind in your face 
forces this reassessment. Uh, what is our purpose? You know, what, what is Jesus calling us to do in this place? Because as I was thinking about it this week, if your purpose is just to survive, you won't survive. Um, you need to have a mission. You need to have a purpose, a Christ-given purpose related to, that com to your community, to the environment around you, to the world. But you really need to have a defined purpose. This is what we are about when you face the wind coming into your face. And the other thing I think it does is, and I've seen this when I've done interim ministry, is it really makes us ask, what are our values? You know, what are our core values? I can remember doing a core value exercise with a congregation, and, and we really had to decide, you know, what are the things that are most, what do we value the most? And prioritize those, and that is tough work to do. And the, sometimes the wind in our face, when it creates that kind of crisis, is the thing that forces us to, ex to examine what is our purpose and what are our values. I've always liked what the business and nonprofit consultant Peter Drucker said. There's just two questions. He said, what is your business and how's business? And sometimes the wind in our face really makes us ask those two questions because we have to clarify, you know, what is it that we're about? What is, what is Jesus really calling us to right now in this place and in this time? Because I think to circle back, the wind in our face is about creation. Uh, it's about creating out of chaos, creating out of formless void, that God sends that spirit over us, over the church, over the world, and recreates out of it a new creation. And I truly pray that is where we are headed.